assalamu alaikum class today we are having lecture number 7 this is from chapter number 7 and the topic is punctuation punctuation is very important and helpful topic in our english grammar what do we mean by actually punctuation punctuation is a system of symbols in english language there are different symbols which are used in english english language some are used at the end of sentences they all of them are having all of them are having the separate purposes now we are going to see how many punctuation marks we use and what are different uses of those punctuation mark first of all english language has many punctuation marks that is first of all we start with the full stop it is also called period second is called as sign of interrogation interrogation thirdly we have sign of exclamation fourthly we have some pauses they are called first of all comma second is called semicolon thirdly we have colons fine then we have some others like apostrophe then we have brackets then we have apostrophe brackets and then we have hyphen these are different marks of punctuation which are used in english grammar now one by one we are going to to see how they are used in grammar first of all we start with the terminals what we mean by terminals terminals are those marks of punctuation which are used most often at the end of the sentence and first one of them is full stop or period period actually is the name given a to this full stop in american english and full stop is the name given to this particular symbol in british english so both of these names are applicable for this mark of punctuation period is for american english and full stop is for the british english first of all period is is used at the end of declarative sentences and imperative sentences like what and sometimes in optative sentences as well okay declarative sentences start with capital letter sara enjoyed mangoes here it is a complete thought fine it is a message which message an information and in whenever an information is there in a sentence that is called a declarative sentence and this message and thinking is complete so i am using the full stop over here at the end imperative sentences do not play outside i could always close it with the full stop this is an order or you 
If you add please in the beginning, it might be a request. And this request is closed with a full stop. Optative sentences. May you live long. These are called, this is called an optative sentence. And here it might, you might close it with the full stop. Here full stop, the presence of full stop is compulsory. Actually, the full stop is the main identification of the structure of the de declarative sentence. But here in these two sentences, full stop is optional. Why? Because we have some other choice to close this, this sentence as well. We'll see afterwards what is that choice. Okay, so full stop is used at the end of complete statement or you might say at the end of declarative sentences, imperative sentences and optative sentences. This is one of the punctuation mark among terminals. These three marks, punctuation marks are called as terminals. Why? Because these three are used at the end of the statement or at the end of the sentence. Now we move on to another one that is called as sign of interrogation. This is called sign of interrogation. Sign of interrogation is used at the end of questions. Who has committed this mistake? How do you do? Or you could always uh, say that sign of interrogation is marked at the end of direct sentences. In narration, we are going to see how, how, there are two types of sentence, uh, interrogative sentences. One of them are called as direct sentence and the direct in, uh, interrogation and the other is called as indirect interrogation. This is called direct interrogation and a, a, a sign of interrogation is marked at the end of this direct interrogation. Okay, now we move on to sign of exclamation. Sign of exclamation. This punctuation marks actually represent its own identity or its identification is that it represents abrupt or exaggerated thoughts, ideas and thoughts. It is one of the compulsory part of exclamatory sentences. It is one of the compulsory part of exclamatory sentences. It might be used at the end of interjection or it might be used at the end of exclamatory sentences. For example, hurrah. He has got first position. How interesting that story is. So we could use it at the end of interjection. Hurra is an interjection. Interjection <clears throat> is one of the part of speech. Fine. And I am using this sign of exclamation at the end of interjection or I could use it at the end of the complete exclamatory sentence or complete statement. First use, the second use of exclamatory sentence is that it might be used at the end of imperative and optative sentences. Why they are used? Why? Because whenever we want to make the statement, 
more intensive and more influential we use this mark as this mark represent the exaggerated thoughts so we use this mark of exclamation to represent the intensive thoughts okay for example stop making nice Okay. If I would be closing it with full stop, it must be delivering a regular thought. But whenever I am closing it with a sign of exclamation, it seems an abrupt message or an abrupt order coming from the higher authorities or the teacher. Okay? Again. May you have a sweet dream. Again here it is a wish and if I close it with full stop, which I have the choice, if I close it with full stop, it might be a, a regular message. But if I am closing it with sign of exclamation, that shows that wish is very influential and heartly wish. So we have seen that sign of exclamation is compulsory part of exclamatory sentences and it is an optional part of imperative and optative sentences. Fine. These were these three marks of punctuation are called as terminal punctuation. Why? Because they are used at the end of the sentences. We, now we move on to the other punctuation marks. They are called as pauses. And that includes three marks of punctuation. First of all, that is called as comma. The second is called as semicolon. And the third is called as colon. And they are called as pauses. In our communication, sometimes we need to give a gap in our statements and in our sentences so that the listener could hear them properly in a proper way. First of all, it is, it was the fourth mark of, mark of punctuation and it was comma. Comma. Fine. Comma is used, the first use of comma is, comma is used to connect different words in our sentences. For example, he learned different languages languages English Urdu French and German Here I am using this comma as connective as it is connective, it is connecting different words in the statement, but I must not use it before the last connect, uh, connection. Here I must be using it as and over here, fine. This sentence is, has given us different choices and these choices of the words are using are being connected with commas. So comma is basically a pause, a connective. It's, it is a pause as well as connective. Here I am giving, you can call it that different languages have been combined and they have been at the end of every language comma is placed to give a pause for before going to the other language. Okay, and if in the sense of connective, we see that these different languages or these different words have been combined with the use of this connective. Sometimes a comma can be used as to combine two independent clauses. Like what? It plays the role of a connective. For example, he is a good student. He does his always best. Fine. Here I am not using any conjunction. 
in place of this comma and but or any other conjunction fine rather i am just putting this comma to combine these two independent clauses so comma can be used as connective as well number c comma is used in different parts of letters parts of letter letter is a medium of communication in language fine and it starts with sometimes the date 29th august 2019 full stop see here in the date in a letter part which is a part of a letter i am using comma over here and full stop at the end of the statement number 2 it also might be used for dear sir here it is used as comma then in the end of which is a complimentary close truly yours here it is closed with a comma so comma is also used in different parts of a letter fine which is actually comma is a little pause which show a little bit pause in the in those parts of letter okay now we move on to number d comma is sometimes used is sometimes used in a sentence with some words which are actually not a part of a sentence part of sentence for example we could always avoid them for example unfortunately comma he lost his car unfortunately he lost his car here unfortunately is an additional information fine which has been used as an adverb over here and we could always avoid it it is not a it is basically not a part of a sentence fine we could always uh, use a sentence without this additional information and to join this additional information in a sentence i am using comma over here okay so then comma could always be used number d comma is the most commonly used punctuation mark in grammar it is the most commonly used above all other punctuation marks okay number f comma is used to join subordinate clause clause with a main clause number 1 when he reached the station comma subordinate clause the train had left okay this is a subordinate clause and this has been combined with the main clause with the help of this connective comma over here so we have seen a lot many uses of comma that is why comma is called the most commonly used punctuation mark in english grammar first of all comma was being used to connect different parts 
of a sentence, fine, and it served the purpose of pauses as well. Secondly, we have seen that comma is used to combine two independent statements, fine, without any other conjunction. Comma played the role of a connective over here. Comma is used in different parts of a letter. We could use it in the date. We could use it at, at, uh, um, at the end of complementary close. And we could use it as for the to address our, um, address our recipient as well, okay? Comma is sometimes used in a sentence with some. Sometimes comma is used in a sentence with some of the adverbs, fine? Um, so that we could make it more meaningful, okay? And, and at the end, we have seen that comma is used to combine our, in our subordinate clause with a, with a main clause, okay? We could always use comma after some of the connectives. Another use of comma. Comma is used with some connectives as well. For example, his mother asked him to study comma, however, comma, he wanted to play. Here, two clauses have been combined with this connective, however. So, after however, and therefore, however, and therefore, we used most of the time, comma, to place them or to connect two clauses with this connective, okay? For example, we can also have an example of therefore, he worked hard, comma, therefore, he won the first position. Here, this connective has been combined with comma, with the message, this therefore has been used as connective between two thoughts. So, comma has a vast variety of uses in English grammar, okay? Now, we move on to its another part, which is called as these three marks of punctuation are named as pause in English grammar. Now we move on to semicolon. Semicolon is a comma is a little pause. Whenever we increase the pause, the duration of the pause, the punctuation marks differ. For example, if the pause is very brief and short, we use comma. But if we sometimes we want to extend the pause, fine, then we are going to use semicolon. Semicolon. And this is called semicolon. Okay? This is also one of the pause in English grammar. Semicolon is used at the, in those particular statements whenever we want to join a long many different items. At that particular time, we use semicolon. For example, he performed a long list of following activities. Fine. Here, I am going to combine a long list of items. Here, I will be using semicolon over here. Okay? Number one is teaching, marking, 
marking the worksheets. Number three, supervision of the class. Fala, fala. Okay. Whenever we want to want to combine a lot many different items, fine. Or we have a long list of different items. We always use this mark of punctuation. Why? Because it shows a little bit long pause in the grammar. Okay. And then semicolon could always be joined. It was the first use. Semicolon can also also be used in this part of letter where we used comma previously. Dear sir. I could always use semicolon over here because whenever you address other person, fine, you could make a long pause as well as short pause. So this part of in this part of letter, again we can use comma and semicolon in place of comma. Number C, comma is also used to make some interrelated statements. Okay, if you work hard, you will win the race. If you work hard, you will win the race. Here again, when there are two interrelated or interlinked statements, you could always join them with the help of this semicolon okay so semicolon is a larger pause as compared to comma and firstly we use it to join or to connect a long list of items secondly we join we use it in this part of letter where we address our recipient and thirdly we combine it to use two interlinked statements now we move on to colon Colon, fine. Again, colon, colon similarly with S, with the semicolon. Colon is also used to combine long list of items. So we must say that semicolon or colon could be replaced with each other whenever we have to combine a long list of items. We could always use colon or semicolon irrespective of any particular idea of their use. Again, whenever we are using in this part of letter, fine, we could always use semicolon in replace of semicolon, we could use colon over here. Why? Because it is our choice. Whenever we address other person, we could make a long interval or we could make a brief pause to before um, um, talking to that particular person. If you worked hard, again, in the end, colon is used for interlinked statements. For example, if you sew, so shall you reap. If you sew, it is a proverb and it is an interlinked thought and whenever interconnected or interlinked thoughts are there we could use colon over here colon is also used before opening a statement in direct statement whenever we, we call it he said or we say we might say kaid said We may place comma, we may place semicolon or we may place colon without any discrimination. Both of them could be used before opening the statement of Kaideazam. We could use any mark, this mark of punctuation. Why? Because all of them show a pause. Only the difference is between the length of the pause this is the shortest brief 
little pause this is a little bit larger and is this is more larger as compared to this semicolon so without any any discrimination we could use any one of these among the pauses okay now we move on to apostrophe first of all this mark is used to show the possession to show the possession of okay for example sara's bag is lost it is used to show the possession of a noun okay fine it is the possession of a singular noun okay if i you i am going to use the possession of plural noun how i am going to use it boys if only one boys classroom we represent is like this but if i am using boys as plural noun i'll be just just using this comma at the end of this plural noun i don't need to have s again at the end of this plural noun boys classroom that shows the possession of a plural noun okay then comma is also used in some of the contractions fine for example she has lost her bag here apostrophe s is the contracted repla is replaced as has okay is in the same way there are lot many contractions are not is not have not has not am not after in all those particular contractions we use comma okay then comma must not be here if i have talked about the possessions this is the possession of a noun but there is also some possessive pronouns as well for example that includes yours fine hers then it is theirs his they are also called possessions but here we are never going to use comma we are never going to use apostrophe this pen is yours i am not going to place apostrophe in any of this statement or anywhere in this statement apostrophes are never used in the possession of pronouns apostrophe might be used in the to show the possession of a noun okay now we move on to parenthesis or brackets we also call it as parenthesis right brackets are used whenever we want to highlight something for example if a prose is going on he has learned chapter number 15 from this text book if we want to mention anything specific within a statement we could always close that different state different message with this bracket or parenthesis he born he was born in 1900 okay okay or 29 2010 fine whenever we want to show the life period of some person 
fine we could always close it with the with this bracket see whenever we have a different statement or some message or some some um, any uh, information fine that is in the form of statistics we could always use the brackets okay then is the hyphen the last one is called hyphen fine hyphen is a short line it is used to combine the compound nouns previously whenever we are having the compound no nouns all of them they might be used with this hyphen hey, but in modern grammar we have replaced many of the combined compound nouns without the hyphen fine if a compound noun is is you uh, is using the hyphens it is in this way kaide azam okay fine then it is previously it was if it was like this black board i used hyphen over here but now it has been replaced with a single noun black board without the this is the modern use of the compound noun okay so whenever we are needing uh, whenever we have to join some compound nouns we have to develop or form some compound nouns we use this hyphen over here okay this was all with the topic of punctuation we have seen that different marks of punctuations are used there is a system like other lang the grammatical system this is also a system which is contributing to the english language and this this are the symbolic messages actually these are the symbolic um, uh, meanings or the uh, informations which is which is used in a sentence to make it more influensive and more attractive okay we have missed two other marks of punctuation that include double quotation and the other is called as single quotation how they are used in english grammar this is what we are going to see okay first of all double quotations the direct statement of the direct words of any speaker he said they are always closed in double quotations this is how we close it okay the exact word or the exact words by the speaker they are always closed in double quotation marks okay if we want and along with double quotation single quotation is also sometimes used together with this double quotation how come for example if we have a statement or the exact words of a speaker he speaks sometimes and within that statement he points out something new or something different from that we could always place them within the single quotes for example he said he will prepare Francis Bacon he'll prepare a lecture on Francis Bacon tomorrow this is how i am going to close this here this is a complete statement from the speaker and that is with the this double quotation marks 
and within that statement i want to point out the name of the author fine and this has been this i thought it is an inf it is an important information and i have placed it with it within a single quotation marks okay so this this is how this the double quotation and the single quotations are used in uh, are used along with the other punctuation marks in english grammar that was all